machine learning the reason why. This is the, the example, the right hand uh, characters recognition. This is the one of the basic example of the good approach for the neural networks. It would be very difficult to develop the algorithm for that. The neural network approach for this is a very good solution in terms of the time of, of the development and in terms of the accuracy. Is it the cutting edge uh, technology? Uh, of course not. The first neuron model uh, has been invent invented in 1943 in US. And the first implementation, the first hardware, only hardware implementation of the neural network has been implemented in 1957 in US as well. Uh, it was uh, the application for the image recognition uh, using light sensor sensors and the resolution of the, let's say, camera. Uh, it was 20 to 20 pixels. Uh, and uh, the structure of the neural network was very simple. It was only one layer of the of the neurons. Mm. And now, this ad idea is still in usage. Uh, it is so-called multi-layer per perceptron, and uh, this solution is very good for the time series prediction. For example, the neural network which is able to count one, two, three, four, etc. We can put the the, the series like. 2, 3, 4, and then the neural network can continue. But it will not uh, continue like uh, 5, 6, 7, but uh, 4.97, 5.90-something, uh, because this is a prediction of the time series. Okay, let's come back to school. <coughs> I think all of you remember well this structure. This is the biological neuron. So we have cell body, we have dendrites and axon terminal. And dendrites are the equivalent of the neuron inputs. Cell body is equivalent of our processor and axon it is our output. And one of the most important message to you. Neural networks it is not digital world. We cannot say about <coughs> the, uh, that the prediction is 100% sure or 100% not sure. We can discuss about the probability of the prediction between 0 and 1. That's, the, I think, the most important point, the most important message. And there is no clear border to judge if the particular accuracy of the prediction is good or not. It depends on the developer and it depends on the application. So I cannot say that the prediction that the accuracy of the neural network, which is, I don't know, 0 0.95, is okay. Depends on application. Okay, so this is the biology, this is the real life, and this is the mathematical model of the neuron. We have inputs, and to each input we can fit the floating point number, the value. We have a set of coefficients, w1 down to wn. Those coefficients are so-called weights in neural networks. So to each input of the neuron, it is assigned the weight. And it is also floating point number. Then we have cell body, our processor. So we need to multiply. What is, what is the function of the cell body of the processor? We need to multiply each input value by the coefficient, the weight, and then accumulate all the results of the multiplication. So the, the anoth another key message for you. Multiply and accumulate. So the basic operation behind the neural networks. Okay, so <laughs> we are multiplying input values by, by weights, then accumulating the results. Then we have kind of bias, just another sum. And then we are comparing the output the result of multiply and accumulation process to activation function. And this is the most simple activation function. So if the result is lower than zero, the output is uh, zero. If the result is uh, equal or 
uh, greater than zero, the result is one. So this activation function is so-called unit step. So this is the mathematical model of the neural network. And now let's see what is, what is the possible bridge between the biology and the quite, or I would say, very useful technical implementation of neural network structure. This is the Limulus Krab. This is the Latin name. The second name is Horshow Krab. And this Krab uh, has five or seven eyes, the, the black dots on the, on the picture. And, the, and this eye is so-called compound eye. Compound means matrix eye. And this is the structure of the, of the one light sensor. Be another example of compound, compound eye and the silicon implementation of the compound eye. As you probably know, just uh, after our eyes, we have eye nerve and it is crossed. And uh, do you know what is the estimated stream uh, we acquire per second in bits in front of our eyes? It is 10 in power of 9 bits per second. So quite a lot. And thanks to this crossed eye nerve pre-processing, our brain must process only several bits per second. And this is the, uh, the example or the uh, simplified implementation of the eye nerve of this limulus crab. This triangle, it is a symbol of the neuron. So we have three inputs and uh, following weights, minus 0 0.5, then one, then minus 0 0.5, and this is the bias. In our case, it, it can be consider considered as a threshold. So two of the sensors are exposed to the daylight and two of sensors are exposed to the shadow. And here is the border of shadow and daylight. Let's uh, consider this, uh, the first neuron. This input is activated, so one multiplied by zero point minus 0 0.5 plus 1 multiplied by 1, plus 1 multiplied by minus 0 0.5. So the result is 0, the result of accumulation is 0, and it is less than 0 0.25, so the output is 0. And for this neuron, uh, we can do the, the same evaluation of the, uh, of the output, we have 1 and then zero and zero. What is the conclusion? Crab exposed to the full daylight can see nothing. And it makes sense from the biological point of view. Because the brain of crab is quite small, so there is no need for crab to see the landscape. But crab, thanks to this nerve eye, can very easily detect the border between shadow and light. Crab can easily count the objects. Crab can easily detect the edges, which makes sense from biological point of view. And of course, if, if exposed to the shadow, to the night, to the darkness, crab can see nothing as well. And this structure just reduced the amount of information and lets us to extract some features like moving objects like edges. And this structure, this neural network, is so-called site breaking because the site weights are negative. That's why the site inputs are breaking somehow the activation of the neuron. And this structure is used for computer vision, for image recognition. We just discussed the atomic neuron model. But today we are talking about neural networks. And this is the, the basic structure of the neural network. Uh, the neural network consists of at least three layers. Input layer, hidden layer, or dense layer, depends on the, on the wording, and the output layer. And what is very interesting, the number of the neurons of the elements in the output layer is equal 
to the number of classes to predict. Today, we will focus on the uh, and we will practice the audio or acoustic scene classification application. We will use microphone to 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 distinguish between different acoustic scenes, like indoor, outdoor, and in vehicle. So in our case, uh, we have three classes to predict. So the number of the, of the neurons here uh, will be equal to three. The activation functions. We discussed the, the most simple unit step activation function. But in practice, of course, there is more types of activation functions, starting from unit step and the generalization of the unit step. So the unit step is uh, vary from zero to one. The, the generalized one, so-called signum, vary from minus one to one. Then linear, piecewise, logistic hyperbolic tangent, and I think quite well known to us as electronic engineers, a characteristic rectified linear unit, so just a diode characteristic. And this activation function is very useful for the image recognition. Our reality is not linear, that's why we need not linear activation function for, for, the, for the image recognition uh, neural network. Today we will focus on the supervised learning. It means that we need supervisor, we need teacher, we need teacher. And in our case, this teacher, it is, of course, the algorithm. Uh, what is the basic idea behind the, the, the learning process? It is so-called forward propagation. We are feeding the network with the batch of input data. Then we are analyzing, we are comparing the output on the neural network, which is so-called result of the inference or the or just the inference so the prediction means inference we are comparing the result of the prediction to the expected value and then if it is not in line the teacher in our case the algorithm tunes the coefficients inside the neural network and in our case the coefficients are the weights and the biases. And this is very complex process in terms of mathematics behind. This is the problem of the optimization of the multivariables functions. In fact, we need to find the minimum of the loss function. I will explain uh, later on and do it step by step. But do not worry, those algorithms are ready, the, the libraries are ready, and we can just reuse the ready solutions. So the teacher algorithm job is just uh, feedback, feeding the inputs with batch of, of data, then comparing the output to the expected output, and then adjusting the weights. And again, the new wording. So the prediction in uh, neural networks means inference, the expected value of the prediction of the inference it is grant true data set is it clear we are touching the surface only i am fully aware but we need to catch the, the the basic idea for the supervised learning process we need a teacher we need a dedicated algorithm to tune the coefficients the weights and biases our solution, cube.ai tool, supports Cortex-M4 and Cortex-M7 because of floating point unit, because of the hardware acceleration of the computation. Next important message to you, the neural network, the design of the neural network and the learning of the neural network, it is, I would say, this is 10%, 5% of the process. I think there are two very difficult parts. The data set collection, it could be a very expensive process. And the pre-processing stage. Because it is, it is better to avoid uh, feeding the neural network with raw data. 
I think almost always we need the pre-processing stage, which is not trivial as you will see today. And this is for the R&D uh, manager's message. You need really experienced DSP experts in your team. This is important uh, stage, quite time consuming. And uh, when it is time consuming, it means that it is expensive. We discuss the most simple structure of the neural network, but of course, in practice, we have a lot of standard neural network types, starting from Perceptron. So do you remember the 1957, the hardware implementation? Then we can simulate, for example, long short term memory just by implementing the, the, the feedback. Uh, we can uh, implement the, some recurrent uh, neural network structures, again, to simulate some, some memory process, to be able to predict time series, like stock exchange, for example. And very practical structure in terms of industry. Convolutional network. So this is the, the most common structure uh, which is used for the image recognition. And the structure of this network reflects the functionality because we have inputs. Then this triangle structure, it is filtering stage. Here we are reducing the amount of data. Do you remember our iNERV, which reduced the amount of data from 10 in power of 9 bits per second down to several bits per second. So this is the role of the convolution, filtering of the data. And we can also describe this stage as a feature extraction. So the convolution layers can be used to extract the features like particular grayscale of, the, of particular areas of image, the, the edges, counting of the points, uh, etc. Then we have brain of our ne neural network, so it is dense layer or dense layers. Dense means that the input of the following layer is connected to each output of the, of the previous layer. And then we have output layer and the number of, again, number of the neurons is equal to the number of classes, number of states of the system to predict. Deconvolutional network, so here we have convolution, here we have deconvolution. Sometimes it seems to us that, that we have not so much data, but using deconvolution, we can try to find hidden patterns. 